Hi, I'm Julie Willersdorf and I work as a teacher and a support worker in the Koori unit. Um, my first introduction to the Koori unit was when years ago we shared a building with the Koori unit. It was my classroom up one end and the Koori unit classrooms up the other end. And I used to have a look at the students coming out of the Koori unit, happy, laughing, always something going on there, a lot of noise in the classroom always out and about and I thought I'd really, really like to do that. So an approach was made to me one afternoon sitting down the river under um, some shady trees, funnily enough, and that was an approach to see if I wanted to teach literacy in the Koori unit and of course I said yes. I was lucky enough to, when I started working at the Koori unit, to be involved in a project called Drive Safe With Your Mob, which was a road safety video featuring Koori people. And as a literacy teacher, my job there was to um, work with the students and write the script. So we did and made the movie. Um, I went on to work in other organisations, but I always tried to keep a day a week or at least some time working in the Koori unit because those community connections are really important. And some of the work that I did do I wouldn't have been able to do it unless I'd had those connections with the community. So well, the course that we run in the Koori unit is called Mamgu Dal. Uh, it's written like any other training packages. There are core units and elective units. So the core units in the Mamgu Dal are around culture, connectedness, learning pathways and literacy and numeracy. And the elective units can be chosen as skill sets out of another training package. So for example, we might do skill sets from hair and beauty or conservation and land management. And then that allows the student to then go on into mainstream education if they'd like to do that. Student support is funded uh, in Victoria under the Warwicka strategy. And there's a link on Moodle to the Warwicka strategy document. Students who are engaged in mainstream education can have uh, two hours of one-to-one -one tutoring support a week and so that's what I do. It's really important to have a relationship with a student and also to know the curriculum and know what the assessment tasks are because that way you can develop a relationship with the student and it's really important to know what you're talking about and to guide the student. One of the barriers to students and one of the reasons that, um, that we offer the support, a major barrier is vocabulary. If the student doesn't have the vocabulary skills, it's really difficult for them to understand the assessment tasks. So that's one of the, one of the things that I do is explain some terms. For example, pedagogy, the student was asked for a response on pedagogy and she didn't actually know what it meant and she looked it up in the dictionary but she didn't understand the dictionary definition either. So that was just a matter of putting it into straight and simple terms so that the student could understand the question. It's also important to negotiate with the teachers on behalf of the student and sometimes advocate for the student. In the Koori unit these are some of the things that work for us. While, we were, while we, we were developing this project, I went and surveyed the students and asked them what they expect from a teacher. And I had some great responses. Our students want us to acknowledge them. And that's a simple hello every morning or every afternoon. Our students want us to show them respect. Our students want us to follow up on what we say that we're going to do. Two of the other quotes which I found really telling were teachers should not be up themselves and be a safe driver. So these are some of the things that you need to keep in mind. Um, Indigenous people have a different knowledge system so there is a resource on Moodle that explains that knowledge system. It's important not to assume if an Indigenous student refuses to take the language and literacy assessment that we provide, it doesn't mean that they don't have literacy or numeracy skills. 
what it means is that they don't feel comfortable demonstrating those skills in that environment. It's often apparent that they do have literacy and numeracy skills, but they become apparent during the course of their work. So the LLN testing isn't an accurate test in terms of determining literacy and numeracy. Sometimes the best lesson plans are the ones that you actually throw out of the window if it's not going well for you. Throw your lesson plan out of the window and continue on. You'd be surprised how much you can learn and how much students can learn through those informal conversations. It's great if you can develop assessment tasks that can be assessed in the normal course of the student's work. So remember, we need to make reasonable adjustments for assessments. Crew students perform really well orally. We allow our students to self-select their groups and our classrooms are set up with little like learning pods, big tables, small tables and tables where students can work on their own. Having a classroom like that means that you need to circulate right around through the classroom and that's a really great way of developing a relationship with your students as well. You need to be aware of tension in the community. It may, you may not be aware of tension in the community but you may be aware that there's a certain undercurrent of tension in your classroom. And that may be because a significant elder or family member is unwell. There may have been an upset in the community someone might have been hurt or injured or there may have been a death in the community. We need to be aware of these things because they deeply affect our students and they affect our attendance. In terms of your relationship with students, crew students have a high shame factor and it's a word that's often used, shame, and that really means embarrassment. So if someone feels shame it means they feel embarrassed. If you um, point a student out or single out a student and ask a direct question, that student may feel shamed. They probably do know the answer, but they're reluctant to give that to you in a group. One of the other issues is attendance and lateness, so we need to be flexible with our students and allow them time to catch up. Um, an example of managing in the classroom would be, for example, if somebody was to come in late Instead of asking the question, where were you, why are you late, what's happening, we just welcome them in, into the classroom, let them have a chat with the other students, and then at some time we catch up, and we often find that it will be the other students that catch them up on what they've missed. I think you also need to establish where your boundaries are in terms of what sort of behaviour and language that you'll tolerate. That's really important. Um, we tolerate language because it's normal recourse and we couldn't be spending all day pulling up people on language when we've got plenty of other things to do to keep them busy and engaged. Humour is really important in the classroom and it's important that you can laugh at yourself and share a laugh with the other students. And a couple of weeks ago I heard two, two young Koori boys discussing the fact that they were going to uh, do their training to get their white card and they were saying isn't that deadly I'm going to have a white card I'm white so that's the use of humour there are plenty more examples but I probably can't share them on this <laughs> so I'd just like to finish with three really important things that I've learned and that I've learned working in the Koori community and in the Koori unit one of the most important things that I've learned is about the culture and about the connectedness to community and family. I've been able to see that from the Indigenous perspective. So quite often we look at that, we look at Indigenous culture uh, from a white middle class perspective and working in the Koori unit and in the Koori community gives you a look at community and culture from the Indigenous perspective. It's really important to understand and acknowledge that. In the Koori unit, it's not unusual to have an age group from 15 to 60. One of the um, oldest women that were in, was in our group was 62, and there was a lot of family in that group too. The last thing that I'd encourage you to do if you do come to teach in the Koori unit is relax and enjoy it. Be flexible. Immerse yourself in the culture. Enjoy the experience. It's just a great experience.